챔피언십을 만났을 땐 음, 지혜가 있었죠. 그 다음엔 여러 명이 거쳐갔지만 이 자리를 지킨다는 건 아마도 거부할 수 없는 나만의 매력? 피파 고모가 되기까지 쉽지 않았어요. 끝없는 자기관리가 중요하죠. 피파 온라인 3 챔피언십 놓치지 않을 거예요. 이에이 스포츠 피파 온라인 3 아디다스 챔피언십 2016이에요. 2016 summer. Tonight, we have a matchup between two teams you might not expect to be on the upper side of the standings based on last year's performances, but man, did they come out with big victories in week one. We're looking to see even stronger performances from both of our teams coming in here to week number two. Crowd is pumped, and we are, so thank you for tuning in tonight. Spoke TV Games production of the LCK Summer. I know I am uh, really looking forward to seeing a couple of these teams and I uh, no, definitely know that uh, our co-caster is too, so do want to welcome you. My name is Reed Rapid Melton. Joining me once again, as always, is Nicholas L.S. Cesare. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing pretty good today, Reed. How are you? Uh, you know, it's been a, uh, we had a few days off where we could, uh, you know, sit, some, sit down, look at some of the teams that are playing and really start to study teams in LCK a little bit more. And while some teams are pulling off some unique champion choices, it's nice to see two of the teams finished on the bottom half of the standings. Uh, I guess uh, Freaks were fifth last season. Season, but uh, uh, nice to see them performing very solidly uh, coming in here to week two. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the most surprising things was definitely the win over Rocks Tigers last week, which honestly, I, that, I think that was the biggest upset last week, at least for me personally. And I'm excited to see how these two teams are going to collide today. Right. Now, SK Telecom, a uh, team that everybody's going to want to watch in LCK, did get a reprieve from last week, but we will be seeing them face off against, uh, I think, KT Rolster a little bit later on, uh, on the 4th, I think it is. And that is going to be a super big match. But, you know, Rock Tigers also, you know, just crushed last season, had a super strong performance, and then it, when it came to the finals, they wound up dropping it to SKT and wound up dropping it in week one with a surprising 0-2 loss. Right, to Samsung. And honestly, those two games for me, I mean, when I was watching them Samsung they weren't necessarily doing too poorly or anything but it felt like rocks was really just very lackluster across the board but all credit to Samsung though they they didn't really make too many mistakes but at the same time they weren't really proactive so 
I wonder if anything's really changed for today. Well, that is true. They kind of got a little bit of a uh, Rocks Tigers buff, uh, if you guys believe in that. Uh, especially specifically Ambition, uh, who just really, really crushed it. Uh, that game, Crown, their mid laner, also had a very outstanding series. And uh, I think it's actually pretty significant to talk about sort of the evolution of both of these teams as they've come into this series, or this season, uh, and this series in this season. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of progression, a lot of things to talk about as far as development from both teams. And it's going to be interesting to see them come up against each other. Uh, both teams actually coming off of 2 0 victories in week one. Right. And I think one of the most interesting dynamics of today is definitely Crown from Samsung versus the bot lane of Freak or Freaks, both of which Sang Yoon dealing 38% of his entire team's damage and Crown coming in with 40% of Samsung's total damage. Like, like, why are the rest of your players there on your team? You're, you're just killing everybody. So. Right. I mean, that those are absolutely absurd numbers, but Afrika's bot lane looks absolutely enormous, having only died two times, both, in two games. That is... Absolutely amazing. So, success. those KDAs are going to be up there in week one, but right. let's actually go ahead and hop into game one picks and bans for Afrika Freaks versus Samsung Galaxy game number one. There we go. You can see the first ban coming out there for the Afrika Freaks. They've gone ahead and banned out Victor. Uh, going to be a good champion to take away from Crown. He actually did play that, I believe, in game number one uh, of their series from week one. So taking away one of his strong champions and just really one of the strong champions in the current mid lane pool. Right. And the Rek'Sai ban is a little bit peculiar because while Rek'Sai was played last week, he's not commonly one of the, the current like heavy meta junglers. So it's definitely a, a targeted ban. Right, I was there actually seeing a lot of players play solo queue and read a couple of analysts articles about champions that could be making a comeback. Rek'Sai was definitely on that list, but Nidalee and Azir, uh, I think Deficio tweeted earlier that they were 100% pick and ban for week one of LCK, so you're definitely going right. to be seeing a lot of those. Rise ban, no surprise there. Uh, and uh, now we're coming into the pick phase. You can already see Linderang actually in here uh, in the top lane for Ixu, which is kind of surprising. Uh, Linderang actually used to play, I believe, mid lane and then sub uh, swapped up to top lane. But now uh, he's going to be subbing in there. So already some interesting uh, you know, player choices coming into game one. Right, and I, I'm, I'm curious to see how he's going to perform. Ixaru didn't necessarily do too poorly, but it seems like he did lose out in laning phase last week. Uh, but that's not too big of an issue. I think that the Elise being first picked is relatively fine. Um, however, with the Rise ban coming out, I expect that top lane is probably just going to be an Echo versus a Maokai. You remember yeah. when we used to see top lane Elise? That was back, uh, back in the day. You used to feel like frozen heart on her. It was super, super good, great base. What a time to be alive, but that's not what we're going to see. Uh, also not going to see a Garen, Galio, or a Gangplank, in case you guys uh, didn't know. I think those are the first three champions on the Korean... Uh, Gragas uh, is the fourth one, yeah, but yep. just, just cycling through a couple of the, uh, the first few champions. A Gangplank, though, possible for Mickey. Uh, not too familiar with Linderang, so we're not sure what to expect from his top lane champion pool, but uh, definitely would be more of a Mickey-esque champion, although the real champions you look for from Mickey are that Zed and Twisted Fate. Right, and with Nami already being picked, that, that's a relatively safe support pick, but it, it does have counter options that are available. So I would actually just be surprised to see Afrika here just respond with support top, and I think that that's relatively safe because then it enables them to set up their team comp a lot better. However, they seem to just go with Kalista Whoa, okay. with Lucian being open. Yeah, to pick a Kalista over Lucian, maybe talk a little bit about why that's surprising because uh, definitely did not expect that lock-in. Kalista is just a champion that completely disappeared from Korean solo queue after the rise of Lucian and uh, Ezreal. She's not necessarily too bad, but it is definitely something that is a little bit peculiar. And I'm really wondering how Sang Yoon is going to really play with it. Now, last week he did play Caitlyn and Sivir, which is, you know, neither Lucian or Ezreal. So right. he definitely does seem to stay away from uh, the current most popular AD carries. Right. And speaking of current most popular AD carries, I mean, we've got kind of, you know, the, the big four up at the top, uh, things like Caitlyn. And wow, that's an Ash lock in. So when things like Ezreal and Lucian and uh, you know, a lot of other picks are up, we're not seeing either of those in this game, not even picked or banned. Right. And Graves getting locked in. Oh, is this setting up for like a triple AD carry uh, composition? We did see Crown play Varus last week in a poke comp, uh, and they still are lacking a mid laner on Samsung, so that could be uh, 
Could be a possible pick if they want to go for that triple AD. Now it looks like they're highlighting two support champions. Oh boy. Regardless of what they pick here, it seems like Freak's composition is is centered on just being a sustained team fighting composition where they wanna they wanna get down and tango. I always thought Freak's composition was centered around as many puns as possible, but uh, when it comes to champions, uh, interesting to see if Blitzcrank is a champion that I think I'm pretty sure like Snowflower and maybe like one or two other players really still play that, but it's definitely a Snowflower champion. He actually mentioned in his uh, post game interview last week that he really liked forcing the or getting the opponent to pick a ranged uh, support, something like uh, Soraka or Nami, and then picking Blitzcrank into it. Although it does look like he'll be going with a little bit more of standard Graves. Oh, no, he's, he's switching back and forth. Is that a lock? And it is the Blitzcrank coming in for Snowflower. And Blitzcrank, well, it's basically a very rare pick nowadays in the professional scene. He is known as one of the heavy counters to the squishy supports like Soraka and Nami. And if, if either one of them just get hit by his hook, it's basically lights out. And with the Twisted Fate coming in, they have an absurd amount of control yeah, in bot lane. Bottom lane is going to be uh, it's going to be the the, uh, the it club. That's the party that all the cool kids are invited to. Uh, mostly being uh, Mickey, and even though the the Blitzcrank support pick is very surprising, uh, another one that to get through is the Twisted Fate pick for Mickey, one of his strongest champions by far, and one that oftentimes you actually see banned against him. So nice to see him on a power pick. Right, and I'm actually really excited to see Twisted Fate. I think it's always a treat to see him play it in professional games mm -hmm. and it's always exciting to see how well someone can pilot it right uh, last pick coming in here for Samsung Galaxy they're gonna be thinking about a uh, Fiora now uh, Fiora kind of fell out of favor in the top lane with the Quicksilver Sash being picked up so her ultimate was really ineffective at dealing with those big tanks and now it's picked up again and with that echo it looks like a mid lane pick for crown right well, one thing I, I, I don't really don't like about Samsung Galaxy's composition here is the Fiora pick is a little bit bizarre. That's just a champion that we really haven't seen too much of lately. And the Echo versus Twisted Fate matchup is going to be relatively okay, but the problem is, is because of the Twisted Fate component, the ability to just have a, a standard split push against Afrika is basically negated. Right, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see a couple of things from both sides. Uh, one, we don't have our standard 80 carry, so it's going to shake things up a little bit. We have the return of Fjord to the top lane for Samsung, and for Afrika, they looked very good in their week one performance, but now week two, they're trying out both of their subs, Xiongwan and Linderang, uh, in place of you know guys like uh, Ixu and then Lyra, who is really starting to step up as one of the best junglers here in LCK. But now, we're going to look at some new players, some new champions, and a a whole lot of action here coming into week two of LCK. Starting it off with some really interesting picks. You can see Mickey there on your screen. Ambition, who really, really put, stepped it up in week one. And excited to see both of those guys play off against each other here in uh, our first game of our second week of this 2016 season. So you're starting lineups for both teams here. Linda Rang, Xiong Wan, Mickey Sang Yun, and Snowflower rocking that eye blitz crank skin. So here we go, we got game number one coming your way. LCK 2016, week number two, starts right now with a Freak of Freaks versus Samsung. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Afrika versus Samsung. Week number two, starting things off here. Some very, very passionate fans in the crowd. Man, I love that intro. Mickey just looks like such a badass, just like looking at you, and you're like, okay, take my ELO, you can have it. But here we go. Game one of this best of three. Some interesting picks. Uh, not too surprised by the lineup there for uh, for Afrika. Uh, I think the biggest thing is that there's no Lucian or Ezreal or Caitlyn or anything like that. Right, which is definitely pretty peculiar. Um, some of the things that I want to talk about really quickly, again, as always, is the team compositions and basically what they're going to be looking to do. So, like I said, in the pick and ban phase, um, it Samsung Galaxy's pick order is a little bit peculiar to me because when the Twisted Fate was already picked, it's, it's very bizarre to pick 
the Fiora, which enables you to do a 1-3-1 or a 1-1-3 or some sort of variation of that. And Twisted Fate is basically a champion that because of Destiny Gate, he's able to just negate that uh, due to his ability to help out the top laner or whoever is resisting against the split push. So expect Samsung to play basically a very Guerrilla Warfare style game. And Afrika just wants to get down and dirty, whether it's via a Blitzcrank hook or like a Lights Out anything from a, a, an Elise Cocoon or a gold card. Or a red buff invade here. Snowflower comes around. He is spotted out there, but he does not spot the uh, jungle top lane duo here for Samsung. So running around the enemy jungle, not a whole lot accomplished there by Afrika. Right. And now with this sort of a start, it is going to set Afrika a little bit behind. Um, it's not going to do too much. They do seem to initiate proactively the, the lane swap, um, which this is going to, it's going to benefit Afrika um, a little bit more than it's going to be uh, benefit Samsung. Um, and that's mostly just due to the component that Blitzcrank has a lot of utility, level 1 and level 2, and his ability to roam and put pressure onto Echo and mid lane, assisting Twisted Fate's gold card and Elise and Maokai. Um, there can be a lot of pressure that can be created really early on. Now, because of the difference in the way that the jungle experience works, only the guy that kills the camp gets the XP for it. You're going to see some differences in the duo jungle that we're used to seeing. Uh, Longzhu actually did something really cool last week where they sent the jungler and top lane duo into lane. They just shoved the wave out, killed the lane minions, and then walked into the jungle. Uh, obviously, maybe exploitable if they do get uh, invaded on, something like that. But this time around, we actually saw Linderang actually get uh, he got those two precious lane CS before he walked all the way up to top lane which is where he will currently be in a nice 1v1. Right, and this is actually really interesting, the recall. Um, I guess m perhaps Afrika thought that Samsung was going to initiate a lane swap, but that was not the case. And so now they're just switching back into normal lane. So they're going to be a little bit behind here, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, and now Graves is going to be able to match Elise on the west-hand side of the map. So. Looks like we're in for a very standard early game. Now this is not the duo lane that we really expected to see. So what what's going on here? Who wins this matchup? I know we talked about Blitzcrank versus Nami, but what's up with uh, seeing maybe the return of Callista here versus Ash? So Callista versus Ash is a little bit interesting when you have the Nami and the Blitzcrank component assisting each other. Oh, hold that thought for one second. Oh man, we like got top lane. Both junglers scouting each other out there. Ambition. Xiangwan uh, just kind of backing away a little bit. It's like the uh, the anti-aggression is like, ah, I don't want to fight you. Uh, I don't want to fight you either. So they both back away and no harm, no foul. Right, so getting back into this, uh, the Ash and the, the Nami had the advantage early on, but now when it gets into this situation... I see a knock up there actually on the ruler. Some nice percentage damage. Sung Yu's gonna get exhausted. There's the summoner kill. Force to flash away. He's gonna go down for first blood. Now Snowflower. Actually, he might go in for this one. He's gonna get the knock up, the flash away, and he can't follow it up there. Ruler saves his own life very, very low. Snowflower turns back around and he goes for the grab, but he can't pick it back up. Ruler grabs himself a kill. That's a 2 0 start for Samsung. Oh, but mid lane, Mickey's actually gonna get the ignite kill. The flash away, the counter flash, and Crown able to stay alive. Perfect parallel convergence for the shield to save his own life against that ignite. Yeah, and I mean the, the bot lane skirmish that just we just saw occur is very uncharacteristic of Song Yun and Snowflower um, because that actually wasn't very close. I know that it appeared close uh, because Blitzcrank was just one hit away from being able to trade with Ash. Um, but it was, it was very bizarre. It seems like they really underestimated Ash's damage. Well, it also, it wasn't really a big surprise either. Snowflower just walked right up on Wraith and Ruler. They were able to mentally prepare for that and just really get ready for that. Snowflower walks up, grabs the support, and if that grab had maybe hit the AD carry, it would have been a totally different story. But nice body blocking and now coming back around. <laughs> nice hawk shot. No surprise there, Ruler. He knows what's up. So one of the problems here that Africa's having is they're basically getting sniffed out at every single angle. Um, and when you have a comp that is not necessarily reliant on accelerating or outspeeding your opponent into the mid game, um, but can definitely benefit from it, it really, really just sucks to get hindered at every single angle. 
It really does, and there's not a whole lot. You, you can tell Afrika are tr definitely trying things. Uh, in game one of Afrika versus Longzhu earlier in week one, uh, Snowflower tried that same thing maybe a little bit earlier, where you, you go for the mid lane roam and try to make something happen. Uh, he's He's been roaming. Uh, we've seen uh, jungle ganks, but nothing has really worked out here for Afrika. And the only reason that Samsung are ahead is because Afrika tried to make that bottom lane 2v2 work, and uh, it just did not go their way. So, uh, you know, lots being attempted, but nothing really working out. That's making for a kind of relaxed early game. Right. And one thing that is important to note right now is Twisted Fate is level 6. So, it's a little bit bizarre that bot lane is continuing to push when Twisted Fate is 6. Um, obviously, he's under a little bit of pressure from Echo here right now, but generally you want to synergize your top and bot lanes in accordance to Destiny Gate. Uh, so that you're able to make maximum use of that. Um, but it seems like they're content with not using Twisted Fate to his fullest right now and just continuing to play a standard game. Maybe they're a little bit flustered by the uh, the early trades that occurred. They kind of get a little, uh, little gun-shy. It's like, oh no. We lost our early 2v2, let's kind of chill out, but uh, uh, Crown does not have Teleport. He actually used that to get back to lane earlier, so he won't be able to follow Mickey uh, if he does go for one of those big ganks, either bottom or top lane, although QB could definitely get a nice repost in there and maybe shut down some of that uh, roam up there. So it'll be interesting. Uh, I know one of the classic things that everybody mentions about Twisted Fate is uh, you know, Messiah, sort of the, the godfather of Twisted Fate. Uh, it mentioned that you know it's kind of the first two or three ultimates that really make a big make or break your Twisted Fate play. You can get those going, get that snowball running. That's really what makes Twisted Fate so powerful, able to you know be everywhere he wants to be. So still keeping an eye on the mid lane, uh, but really not a whole lot really uh, transpiring. There's no huge CS disadvantages or advantages. Uh, keeping an eye down here on the bottom lane. Snowflower definitely looking for those grabs. So, the thing that we were talking about, and it's you know it's good that you just mentioned that about Twisted Fate regarding the first you know two or three ultimates, is uh, Africa hasn't really been able to do anything. So what's going to become problematic is when it comes to the first. Oh, Ash Arrow coming mid, just barely misses. I don't think that's going to hit top lane, but a nice shot, dodge shot by Nick. Yeah. So when it comes to the very first few team fights, the 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 issue that. Afrika's going to have is they don't have the proper itemizations to straight up duel, which is what their composition wants. Um, so all things considered, it's looking like around 13 to maybe 16 minutes, there's going to be a, a probably a decisive fight that is really going to change the tides of the game. And I think that it's lining up to heavily favor Samsung right now. Well, when it comes to changing tides, I think, uh, you know, Wraith's Nami is probably going to be pretty good at that. <laughs> Actually, I guess technically that would be true of uh, Diana, but either way, I'm actually interested to see a uh, dragon now. First dragon uh, is going to be an Inferno Drake, which means it's, I think, probably one of, if not the best dragon that you can get right now. Uh, you know, 8% damage is pretty big. Even if it's not big early, it's going to be big as the game draws on. So we will see that be uh, you know, a good objective to uh, uh, to work for. Uh, in a post-game interview, I think it was Snowflower uh, last week, said that uh, he kind of views it like two good drakes and two maybe not so good drakes. And he definitely did mention Inferno as being one of those high priorities. Right. Definitely right now, the two dragons that Afrika would love to have is definitely an Inferno Drake or definitely uh, one of the Earth Drakes. The Elemental Dragon isn't so bad, but it doesn't necessarily line up perfectly with their composition, whereas Samsung Galaxy definitely would benefit from uh, Water Dragons a lot. The other thing that I think is interesting right now is Twisted Fate's build path. Oh, Crown ulting back in and then walking back out. <laughs> Not a whole lot of uh, accomplished there. Crown actually losing that trade and losing his ult at the same time. Right, and I think that was trying to be an attempt at a mind game where maybe he was hoping to try to get Twisted Fate to flash or something, making him think that Graves was there. But again, the, the thing about Twisted Fate's build... Oh, Graves is here. There's another arrow coming mid <laughs> Mickey is undergoing some adversity. This is what I like to call the struggle. Mickey going through it. And oh, wow, an ult coming in from Ambition. Even still, Mickey just getting absolutely pressured out of his lane. Yeah, now Elias is basically too late. Twisted Fate doesn't really have the ability to hold this. <laughs> that minion stayed alive just long enough for uh, Sung Hwan to repel onto it and get out of there. It was a little bit aggressive positioning. Lindering actually coming back to the mid lane, down to the mid lane rather, uh, just because there's so, so many people there. Yeah. Now, what's basically happening is, well, I'm. Uh, 
little... Okay, now he's recalling Twisted Fate. Um, what's basically happening, though, is all this pressure occurring across the map is it's, it's setting Africa further and further behind because of how they want to move and how they want to interact. And Elise is basically being beat at every single turn right now, and that's just not something that you want to be occurring. And even this... Yeah, just not going to work out. Ruler playing very defensively, uh, backing off the turret, knowing that there's definitely a possibility. A lot of attention coming his way. Walks all the way down. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, Ruler uh, used to go by the name Bung, if I'm not mistaken. I was really excited to cast a guy named Bung, and then he changed his name to Ruler, which, to be fair, is super epic. If you're, I, I feel like I want to see him play against Emperor so that you can see who really is the actual Ruler. And Vision walking in a miss on the cocoon. And once again, nothing really going to come of that. And Vision dodging it. Yeah, this is just very peculiar play. Um, credit to Samsung for basically stopping Afrika at every single twist and turn. Um, and this is this is one of the major problems. So Twisted Fate, when you pick him, it generally is a, uh, a a very proactive pick that requires you to really do a lot with him to make use of him. But they haven't been able to do anything. And then when you itemize with the the Sheen and the Ionian boots into the Aether Wisp, it really says that you're expecting to roam and go off and make stuff happen. Nice. But playmaking items, yeah. right? Absolutely, just a very fast-paced itemization build. So now that he doesn't have the Roa, which would have been a much more common item, especially in this matchup and against this team comp. Um, he's definitely going to feel that in the mid game. Waiting on seeing if Snowflower is going to pull the trigger on this grab here. Uh, but good job uh, avoiding that. Oh, Mickey might be in a little bit of a rough spot. Will get stunned out there by that parallel convergence. Gets back at his turret, locks the gold guard, turns it around, and he's out of there. All the arrow though. Okay, backing off way behind the turret. He knows what's coming his way. It's the third arrow this game. Rulers shot at him, trying to snipe him out. Oh, Ambition though. He's coming in. He's looking for the ult. And actually, the minion wave does scout him out. Vicky, be <laughs> set on all sides. Here comes a nice wave, trying to keep this turret alive. There's actually a grab there. The turret is actually still up. And Snowflower will get defensively ulted. There's a teleport coming out on the bottom lane just to make sure that turret keeps targeting. But a roam down bottom by Crown and Cube. It's going to be the grand challenge thrown out. Cube taking a little bit of damage, but it's Crown who really has to back out of there. Linderang, pretty tanky, and he will be able to survive uh, for now. SSG backing off. Ambition once again looking for an opportunity to go in for some ult kills, but no one dying just yet. Looking for this turret trade. Actually, no, uh, Samsung Galaxy didn't lose their turret, so... Nice yeah, trade. that seemed like definitely a lot of miscommunication. And Samsung, this is the problem that we saw against Rox, which is when they're when they're handed advantages and they're handed the ability to really add a lot of salt to the wound, they just don't take it. And right now, uh, this could have easily just been a dragon timing. Yes, Twisted Fate was recalling, um, and you know, yes, they could have arrived and maybe stalled the dragon. But I don't think there is any way that a free could, could have actually denied it entirely. And then, you know. Samsung just gets further and further ahead. Let's watch this again. Snowflower takes a lot of damage and gets pulled out. Yeah, and uh, basically I think that there was a miscommunication here. They definitely should have just burst down the tower. Um, the Twisted Fate ultimate just basically goes off to add fear. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they know that Twisted Fate can't actually be recalled yet. Um, and then their only goal here is to just completely back off, but Samsung makes a gigantic error when they don't just instantly start going towards Dragon. Yeah, no objectives off the back of that. We've seen uh, a lot of teams prioritize Dragon. In fact, uh, Ever, the team that we actually got a chance to cast uh, the first day of LCK, uh, did a great job at just prioritizing Dragon after Dragon after Dragon. So, uh, kind of interesting to see no objectives really pressured there, even off of some advantages. Uh, you can see Samsung getting a little bit ahead in the gold count, but nothing too significant. Interesting to see, hey, if Mickey can, oh no, there's a flash, Kaku, the CC down onto it, Vision, he's gonna try to ultimate his way out of there, but the 2v1 might just be too much, and this is gonna be first, uh, the first kill of the game, going to the yeah, Freak Freak's bottom lane, though, Sing Yoon gonna give it right back away, and a one for one trade overall. Yeah, and now, I mean, with Graves down, it doesn't really do too much. They could have looked to maybe potentially capitalize on a Rift Herald here, but other than that, nothing is really going to happen. Uh, and I wasn't actually aware. Did Twisted Fate have ultimate for the fight in bot lane? I don't know if we're going to get a replay up on that, but if he did, then that's a pretty big error. Yeah, I want to actually see how that bottom lane uh, altercation uh, came about. Sang Yoon uh, definitely... 
kind of uh, walking by himself, adventuring into the... Uh, that's why you need Pokeballs before you walk into the tall grass, just in case something like that happens. So, gotta, gotta maybe play a little bit more carefully. Kind of interesting to see, you know, the same thing killing both players, just walking in blind and meeting with uh, their untimely demise. Right, and now with Graves on the right-hand side of the map and Botling coming off of a fresh recall, and they know that Twisted Fate wants to recall as well, it would be interesting to see them try to launch a timing against Twisted Fate's recall to try to secure a dragon, uh, because they they will have oh teleport God. up on Fiora and a little bit here, so they would have backup coming from top lane. Nice job using that scrying ward to uh, scout out Snowflower. At every turn, it just seems like Samsung Galaxy, they've, you know, as an observer, you have the F key that can turn on or off, Fog of War. It seems like Samsung's really going for that with the, the one notable exception of, uh, I think it was Ambition getting caught out, but uh, just really doing a great job at countering out every time Xiong Huan wants to gank a lane, uh, seeing these roams coming and putting on enough pressure to keep Mickey uh, in lane. How significant is that, LS, just limiting Mickey's mobility? Well, I mean, the ability to constrict Twisted Fate is something that generally can be extremely difficult, but they seem to be taming him really well. Um, and this Twisted Fate pick is not doing anything that they needed it to do. And so when the mid game really just starts to come out and, you know, the team fights start occurring, Africa is going to find themselves in a world of hurt if they don't really pull something out. All right, well, let's see how clairvoyant Samsung are. Looks like they are pretty good at seeing where they need to go. Here comes the arrow. Mid lane misses again. Mickey might still be in a little bit of trouble, but he just throws out the gold guard, walks back away. Calm, cool, casual, and he is going to actually back in. Here comes the roll from top lane. Linderang all over it, and Ambition just walks in and goes down. I think Ambition was a little ambitious there. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's my job on this. Oh. Can't, can't take my terrible jokes. Just kidding, you can take all of those. I'll just take the good ones. And speaking of taking things, Inferno Drake, dragon number one, will be taken by the Afrika Freaks. So now the gold is evening out, and it looks like they're going to rotate and take mid lane tower here. And this isn't so bad because now they're starting to accelerate ahead of Samsung Galaxy. And this is, again, the same story that Samsung seemed to have against Rocks, and it's now showing its head again here, where they are not proactive with the advantages that they end up securing. And it just leads them into this situation where it seems like they just sort of curl over. I remember in a famous interview with um, uh, CLG uh, EU, back when they were very dominant, very known for playing very long games, they said that they didn't win the games, they just waited for their opponents to lose them. Now Snowflower might be losing his own live crown right on top of him, and there we go, Pop goes the eye blitzcrank, they need to get a replaced screen there, wait, what? Ruler flashing in on Mickey, who is just a little too overconfident. Looks like Ruler found his ruler there. Oh my god. He's been drawn and measured, found wanting. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, gonna be wanting that mid turret. Uh, wait, whoa, what's saying he was bottom lane in a 1v1 underneath turret? He's gonna try for the outplay. Does escape that uh, ult and crown, but I, I don't know, man. Craziness happening all over the rift. What's going on, LS? Mm, I'm not really so sure. I don't like bot lane recalling here. I feel like this is easily Rift Herald timing. Uh, and the reason that it's Rift Herald timing is there is absolutely no way for Blitzcrank or Callista to respond, and you know that Elise is out of position. So disregarding uh, Twisted Fate's Destiny Gate, well, that Let's watch this again. Snowflower, uh, a little bit of a rough spot. Yeah, I don't really know what he's doing here. There's really no incentive for him to be on this side of the map. There's nothing to really gain. Twisted Fate was there with Destiny Gate, if anything really gets out of hand for Callista, and there's real no incentive to get wards. The flash was so good by Ruler, he knew that he was about to get stunned, so he just wants all this stuff to hit faster, so he just flashes in point-blank range, picks up the kill, and that's his third kill of the game. He's 3-0 right now. That's, that's pretty, pretty darn decent. Uh, for a, uh, a new player coming into the Samsung organization just this season, uh, having some good performances. All right, and now bot lane being bot lane actually is a little bit bizarre. I really don't know what Afrika's doing. You can see the Cloud Drake uh, spawning there. But yeah, what is Afrika doing? They're back to the lane phase up in the top lane. Uh, you know, I don't know about ULS, but lane phase doesn't seem to last very long these days. We've got this crazy 4v0 turret takedowns. We've got you know all sorts of ways of just making it end and getting 
getting straight to the team play, but uh, top lane looks like it's pretty solid, although we do have uh, at least Samsung doing that rotation to mid. All right, and I mean, everything just looks a little bit sloppy right now. It doesn't really seem like the Twisted Fate pick is being coordinated enough properly, um, and they're not doing anything with it. And then on top of that, Blitzcrank is constantly in a very bizarre position relative to Twisted Fate being on the team. So. I'm not really so sure what is going on. I mean, it's that Ballista combo. We all saw CLG pull that off, and as soon as they did that, I was oh, okay, the big flash in. Arrow instantly gonna get QSS there. Sangyun gets away from there. QV coming in for an awesome flank, but not really a whole lot coming off of that. A bunch of ults used and not, uh, you know, no deaths. Samsung positioning for this dragon, but it won't be up for a while. So the problem with Samsung here is, again, they, they continue to come out ahead in some situations and they continue to get advantages and, and whatnot, but the thing that we saw happen in the Rocks games was when they did get advantages and had a lot of advantages and began to fight back, their, uh, their team fighting was not as impressive as you would expect it to be. So I, I'm curious why they're playing as passive as they are. Um, an interesting choice, uh, speaking of playing passively, what do you think about Afrika Freak's decision to both play Twisted Beta, a very high coordination champion, and then run both subs, Linderang and Xiongwan? That uh, seems a little bit out of phase. Yeah, it does. Defi that, that, I mean, that's a very interesting point. Um, and it, you know, I, I don't think that it's really uh, showing to be too effective here. It's like, hey guys, we really need to make sure that we get our timings exactly correct. And, you know, it could be that that's what these two subs were planning for. You know, they've been putting in the work training, playing with this global comp, and uh, just not uh, not necessarily working out uh, for them this time. Also kind of interesting, uh, what about the summoner spell choice there by Mickey? He's running Ignite. I know a lot of uh, Twisted Fakes take Teleport to just be even more uh, Mr. Worldwide. Well, I think without the Ignite, you do have a little bit more problems uh, doing that acceleration that we talked about okay. in the early game game, um, so I don't think it's too big of a oh, problem. Oh, Snowflower. He knows something's in there. He actually will go ahead and use that scrying orb. Oh my god, he's looking for the grab. Where is he going to go for it? No, not. Going to throw it out there. Snowflower, oddly hesitant. Yeah, I, I really don't know what's going on here. I mean, uh, we just saw Echo and bot lane continuing to push the wave, and then we saw Blitzcrank and Callista both oh, going again. Someone doesn't want that last auto attack on the ward. Uh, just kind of intimidated. Both teams, exactly like you were saying, LS, uh, kind of hesitant to push any of these go buttons. Right, and I, I really don't know what's going to happen. We have the Drake coming up in about 20 seconds here, so you see Snowflower trying to get in and get vision control. Now, Maokai will have the teleport advantage, and the top tier 1 tower is still existing, so it'd be interesting to see Maokai recall right now. Oh, coming top lane though, here comes Mickey. A nice rip pose there, perfectly timed. McCube still in a 2v1 situation. Uh, is he actually going to go down there? Flashes out with the Ignite sticking down, but it's not enough! He's actually going to live there. Cube gets out alive. Mickey would not does not have flash there, and Cube escapes with his life. Oh my god. Luckiest, handsomest Fiora play ever. Gets out of there. Cube with a nice escape. And that escape is absolutely gigantic because I, what is uh, Samsung doing here? I'm not quite sure because they know that Twisted Fate doesn't have ultimate and he's completely out of position. So they should be fighting for uh, positioning territory. Around oh, yeah, completely out of position, exactly like you said, LS. Mickey, in that 1v1, might have lost, but Snowflower, he's got his back and he will come up to usher Crown back away. Uh, Freaker really wanted to put some pressure on this mid lane. They will finally take that turret down. That is their third turret of the game. And will we see a dragon rotation here? Uh, no, uh, Snowflower at least said that he didn't really highly value this dragon. It feels like Cloud Drake is like the dragon that people take just so that a different dragon will spawn at this point. But it does look like Afrika, having taken that first dragon, will look for a second one and will give them some extra out of combat movement speed. Right, and again, as you were just saying, it is the dragon that is basically useless. No one wants it. This is the worst card that you can get in a draft in Hearthstone. This is basically <laughs> the Wisp. Um, and basically, I mean, I, I, I still would have liked to have seen Samsung Galaxy try to capture it, just get anything that they could have. So it's peculiar that they let it just get away, considering Afrika did make the mistake in top lane, not securing the kill onto Fiora, while Mike Maokai had the flash. 
Uh, I was actually thinking about, uh, as far as Elemental Dragons, you can see there two Inferno and a Cloud there. You can see that little overlay right underneath Afrika. I uh, saw LVPES do that for the Spanish broadcast. I was like, that is super sick. I think there's like a front page Reddit post saying like, that's actually pretty amazing, Afrika having those two, and now you can see which two they have. So nice to see some further innovation. Just letting you guys know what's up with the dragons. Or drakes. They are actually drakes now. Uh, I believe it was... Uh, oh, man. Cocoon actually does hit on with Ambition. There's a big grab from Snowblar, but is there enough damage? Looks like Ambition will have the ability to walk back away, and uh, once again, LS, no one dies. No one dies again, and one thing I need to bring up is the, the fact that Echo is able to split push right now is a testament to how far behind and Afrika is relative to what they needed or where they needed to be at this point in the game. The fact that Twisted Fate is not enough of a threat to really keep him in line to the point where he can do stuff like this is problematic. Now, obviously, they know Destiny Gate is down, um, but Samsung should not be able to be getting away with these wonky split pushes, but they are because Afrika is just too far behind. So what Afrika really needs to do right now is they need to force grouped up fights when Twisted Fate's ultimate is down and really make use of that lights out team comp that they have. Now it's interesting that you say that Afrika is so far behind because if you look at the gold count and the objective count, it actually seems like Afrika are pretty ahead. They've got those two dragons in the advantage, but uh, what is it that makes Afrika so far behind? Because it's not necessarily evident from just the numbers. Well, the problem with Afrika is, is they're facing an Echo um, and then additionally they're, they're facing the Ash that has an absolutely gigantic wake up in the mid game uh, in addition to that grave. So when they have champions like Elise and Twisted Fate and Wait, what Blitzcrank. A, what aggro? Oh, Blitzcrank aggro Baron with his passive from his ult. <laughs> you can't stay sneaky in the Baron. <laughs> Like Snowflower is just like sitting there, and he knows secretly that he's gonna aggro Baron, but he just doesn't tell the rest of his team. <laughs> right. I think what you do is you, you use your ult as Blitzcrank, and then walk into the pit so that your passive is on cooldown. <laughs> but he just kind of you know forgot that <laughs> step. <laughs> like let's hide out here, guys. Wait, what? Snowflower, you betrayed us. So no uh, no sneaky Baron pit uh, tactics, but they did almost get a nice grab there, and nice to see them using Blitzcrank effectively, but it just didn't work out. So. Unlucky. Unlucky there. Speaking of unlucky, QA standing right on a ward, but it does expire, so he'll be a little bit more incognito now. Now Graves just coming around and clearing out the jungle. And again, this is, I mean, Ambition has been caught out twice, um, which is all of Afrika's kills have actually just been, you know, thanks to Ambition misstepping or overextending, I should say. Um, but the, the, the fact that they're able to move oh, around the Zong map... Juan has got a good position here for a Cocoon. Might try to catch out. Wraith actually does land the Cocoon. An immediate exhaust actually stops a lot of that AP damage. Wraith actually gets the recipient of all of Mickey's damage. He does hit that Zonius, but he is trapped in the middle of the entire enemy team. He's trying to run back away, and he actually does get in there. Clindering in a great spot there, blocking off a lot of that damage there. But Kube in there with a lot of true damage. Kube actually looking for the kill there, but he's dropping low himself. The old backwards from crowd. He's looking for a kill either on a Lindering, on a Mickey. Mickey actually does find a catch out on a Wraith. It looks like Samsung is falling apart. A nice gold guard from Mickey grabs himself that kill on the support. Ambition trying to go in, but he's not going to go down there. A double kill for Young Juan and Afrika Freaks with a 4 for 0 exchange. Yeah, and I mean, this is what I was talking about, though. Even though Afrika was behind and they should have lost that team fight, they completely outplayed Samsung at every single step. And Samsung just wasn't able to salvage or make any use of the position that they were granted. And this is the problem that we also saw in the Rocks games, where they had absolutely enormous leads. And here we go into the replay. And you're going to see the Cocoon go down on Tanami. The exhaust comes out in perfect timing. Twisted Fate comes in a little out of position. Echo trying to do something in Fiora as well. But it doesn't matter because their bot lane is basically too far out and not able to really do anything. You can really see how valuable Linderang was there in the front, just completely tanking up the world. And then uh, this flash by Ambition, a little bit ambitious, like we said earlier. He's trying to get in there and make the big play on a Mickey, but just nothing seconds happens. Seconds off that reload mechanic sometimes at the worst time. And now Baron being started off here by the Afrika Freaks. Teleport coming in from Crown. 
Arrow going to land there on a Snowflower. A lot of big burst damage. But once again, Linderang in the front doing that great job tanking things up. We actually will go down there to Ruler. Now this is Africa. They're actually the ones in a little bit of a rough spot. Changwon trying to run back away, but it looks like he is inevitably... Uh, uh, okay, I say inevitably, but sooner or later, he's going to go down here. Does land a nice cocoon there on a Cubay. Now it's actually Samsung that are continuing this Baron. Mickey on the run here from Ambition. He's got that bonus movement speed from the Cloud Drake. We talked about you know, maybe not being impactful. Now it will actually help Mickey stay alive, but the Baron will not. And it's actually taken down for Samsung by Crown. And I think the the story of that... Well, I don't think Twisted Fate actually needed to <laughs> I, die there. I don't know about that. Yeah. That, that looks a little bit suspect. Uh, but mm. I, I think that the, the story of that fight was Fiora got her ulti off. Um, and we saw that she did not get that off in the first fight, which that completely could have just changed the tide. And rest in peace, QSS. We know thee well. <laughs> Lady Rang's thinking, hmm, I wonder if I could just have that item that completely nullified Fiora as a champion. Well, sorry, I can't buy that anymore. Well, I guess you can, but it doesn't cleanse off Fiora at all. But either way, a great positional fight there by Samsung. They, uh, you know, wait until a freak overextend, take the Baron, and now on to an Earth Drake, or I guess Mountain Drake be doing a little bit more damage to objectives. And so now all that um, uh, Samsung actually needs to do is they need to execute a 0-1-4. And the reasoning for that is because top lane is basically able to just be completely neglected uh, by their team comp because aside from Twisted Fate, no one is actually able to make use of attacking that tier 2 tower. So if they put all of their uh, attention into bot lane and they enable Echo to just continue his assault onto mid lane, it enables them to set up very nicely for a 0-1-4 into a 0-0-5, which Afriko will have a very difficult time of responding to. Yeah, very difficult to clear out this wave and Samsung walking up, taking a free second tier turret, starting to get that gold per uh, Baron stat. Climbing up their way, rotating through the jungle, clearing out some words. And Samsung, uh, we talked about how Afrika, oh, going for the grab, Snowflower. Not, not on par with his grabs this game. Yeah, and I, I, I don't like this rotation into mid lane right here. I don't think this is actually necessary. Uh, the tier 2 tower being up is completely irrelevant. Um, they could have just actually stayed 4 in bot lane. Even though Afrika would have had technically recall advantage and defender's advantage, I think that relative to the team compositions, Afrika is in a very, very big world of hurt right now. Um, and if they just kept that 0-1-4 going a little bit longer and then waited until the duration of Baron would end in recall, they would find themselves in a much better spot. Six to nine, the score right now. Uh, it doesn't, definitely does not tell the whole story. You mentioned that Afrika were actually struggling as far as their position in the game earlier. Well, where do they, where, where, where are they at right now? What, what is Samsung's big advantage at this point in the game? So don't let the gold values mislead you. Even though there is only about a 4,000 gold difference, it looks like 40, 4,500 right now. Um, Afrika is really, really far behind. Um, and the reason that they're so far behind is because the champions that they have are reliant on extended skirmishing, and they just don't have the items to do that right now. And so when you're trying to attack into these tanks, like Echo, even though he's not necessarily building tank, or like Graves, who is extremely durable, you just have a really hard time. And if Fiora gets off that ult, it's just, what do you really do? Um, and then on top of that, because of the level advantage, you have the base stats coming in, and because of all the durability, it makes it so that the Blitzcrank... Oh, Snowflower looking for a grab, just barely misses Ambition. That could have been huge for Afrika. Ambition uh, jumps in for some turret damage, but either way, this push continuing. Drawing out, Afrika committing to that mid lane defense. Do you think it's wise for Samsung to commit to that mid lane offense? Because like you said, it d didn't really matter if they took the second tier. What? Hit on to Mickey. He's actually going to hit that Zonya to the last second. Sa Sangyu with a nice cleanse there. Trying to get out there. Mickey will finally go down there. Sangyu versus Ambition underneath the turret. Ambition helping Crown get that kill. A kill onto the second tier mid lane turret. And that is going to be a massacre by Samsung. Four for zero exchange. Most likely this inhibitor. Maybe even the game. These death timers are actually super long. Samsung could pressure on in for this one. 13 to 6 there. And 30 second death timers left for the Afrika Freaks. It's all up to Linderang. He will go in. Actually, Twisted Advances a minion. Not sure about that one, but these Nexus turrets are dropping. How much can one Maokai do? Looks like the Nexus dropping down very, very quickly. Linderang dropping down too, and it looks like the, he will actually not survive as long as the Nexus, which will go down, giving a game one victory with 600 with 66.6 gold. There at the end, Samsung Galaxy taking a game one win.
Yeah, and I, I just don't know what to say about that Baron call that absolutely threw them the game. And it's the story of Samsung again, where they just wait for their opponents to make an absolutely gigantic mistake, and they punish, and then somehow win the game. So, anyways, Afrika there really misunder, uh, misunderstanding their position in the game when they went for the Baron call, and it ended up costing them. Absolutely, yeah. Cost them at the Baron, and then the Baron snowballed into not one but two turrets, and then uh, a great team fight there at the end to give a uh, game one victory uh, over to Samsung. And uh, they looked really, really strong in their previous series. Uh, Rocks Tigers, you know, one of the best teams in LCK, regardless of uh, you know where they uh, fall. And uh, last uh, last season, very dominant. This one starting off a little bit a uh, little bit rough. Uh, lost to Samsung last week, and now Samsung continuing their win streak here in week number. Two, but it is a best of three series, which means there is always comeback potential. That means that we will be looking for that in game number two coming up next. ハートリオタ。あ、もうら。よ、よ。よし、ハートが損に買う。ハートビビミョン20%オフ。オンパンギリアム。エンコール中止。난요새수염 전쟁은 이미 시작되었다. 매운데 자꾸 먹고 싶어. 나도 그래. 하바네로와 청양고추를 썼다고? 맛있어 죽게 만들 셈이야. 하바네로와 청양고추가 더해진 매운맛의 몬스터. BHC 맵스터. 인류와 매운맛의 전쟁이지 말입니다. 
챔피언십을 만났을 땐 음, 지혜가 있었죠. 그 다음엔 여러 명이 거쳐갔지만 이 자리를 지킨다는 건 아마도 거부할 수 없는 나만의 매력? 피파 부모가 되기까지 쉽지 않았어요. 끝없는 자기 관리가 중요하죠. 피파 온라인 3 챔피언십 놓치지 않을 거예요. 이 a 스포츠 피파 온라인 3 아디다스 챔피언십 2016이에요. 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Coke Zero League of Legends Champions Korea Summer 2016. Coming back with game number two, Samsung versus uh, the Afrika Freaks, and you can just see from those damage stats, a massive performance from Ruler, and uh, subs that really didn't show up there for the Afrika Freaks. Yeah, I, I mean, I really just don't know really what happened there. Um, I, I think that if you're going to run a Twisted Fate composition, I think that you really need your main players going in there for you. Well, even with the main players, the duo lane has always been a strength for the Afrika Freaks, and you just saw how huge that difference was, which started out with this uh, level uh, 3 play down in the bottom lane, the 2v2 that just went so wrong for the Afrika Freaks. Right, and I think they were just really underestimating what Ash can really do early on. She is such a powerful duelist and just what did not turn out very well. Well, speaking of powerful duelists, so we did see Fiora this game, and I know some uh, you know people, some analysts I saw the game tweeting, maybe it's not necessarily you know, the greatest top lane pick, but hey, it was effective whenever he got his ult off in team fights. Definitely wanted very, very uh, uh, strong performance by Ruler, definitely deserving of this MVP. See, he had a... Uh, a little bit low on the kill participation, but his damage was insane. His damage was really good, um, and I, I definitely think that, you know, the MVP is deserving. Uh, however, I think that Crown did a fascinating job on Echo because he really twi tied Twisted Fate up, and that is something that is extremely hard to do at the professional level. He certainly did twi him up, uh, but uh, did do a great job controlling Mickey that whole game, and it's not just Crown, it's the entire team, so really good, uh, good job there, my... Korean, not quite good enough to read uh, what they're saying there on the sign, but definitely some big fans in the audience for Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> Little Teemo hats there. Yeah, we have two Teemos in the crowd. We also have a couple of other like really wacky hats out here. It's like the hats where you like put the cups on either side and then you drink it through a straw through your mouth. Saw a couple of those out there, so so super super cool. But either way, uh, it's good to see uh, a, a, a some subs coming in here, and I don't think you can really make too much argument for this. I know it was a big question: you know, Are we going to see the full of Freaky Freaks roster? And it does look like Iksu and Lyra will be subbing in. All right, and that's something that I'm very excited to see because now that means they're, they are fielding their main team, um, and so that's going to be very good for them. Uh, and I'm interesting now to see if Samsung is going to be able to contend with their main lineup. Well, what's interesting to me is that usually you have uh, you know a, a sub lineup that practice champions that you know, your main lineup can't really play or relatively unique, but uh, it doesn't look like that's what happened in game one. And uh, I think it's kind of interesting to see this two subs first and now going back with the main roster. Right, and it just might have been something that they were looking to do because it's so early on in the season and they were coming off of a 2-0 victory. Um, so I don't think it, I, you know, I don't really fault them for doing that, giving the subs some experience and some exposure. Uh, and I don't really think it's that too much of a risk. I really like that. I remember when SK Telecom was one of the first big teams to consistently use subs in their regular games. Uh, it worked very well for them, and we really haven't seen too many teams, uh, uh, aside from Longzhu, who tried right. pretty much every combination of their sub roster. That was, uh, it was a treat to watch last season. A lot of different players getting play time, but nice to see the Afrika Freaks uh, you know, bringing up their subs to play here tonight. I was actually looking at uh, their subs at, at the entire Freaks roster yesterday, and I was like, what, what do these guys do on the team? I know, uh, I think it was actually their top lane sub that used to play mid lane and then swapped up to the top lane. Uh, uh, a lot of variability there. So good to see them getting some play time, but I'm just not sure that uh, I think it's going to take some more time for them to come into their own. Yeah, definitely. And so moving into this game, I think the question is, is how is Afrika going to approach the game plan? Or what is going to be their story for this game? Well, you know how Samsung's approaching it with uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, careful reflection. It's like, how did we win that one game? Oh yeah, now I remember. So they're gonna go for that again. It appears that he is praying to Timo right now. <laughs> well, whatever uh, League of Legends God you wanna rely on. Uh, I'll never forget, I think it was the never ending story. That's got a few that you could uh, hit up, but uh, looks like the never ending story of the Afrika Freaks, actually one of the uh, youngest stories outside of like MVP and Ever that came in this season. Yeah. Uh, they are, I think, the newest team. I believe so. Well, they were acquired by Afrika. Okay, so yeah, they were Rebels Anarchy and then just Anarchy correct. before then. <laughs> yes, so, correct. Here we go. Game number two should be starting up here in just a second. Samsung Galaxy versus the Afrika Freaks. Everybody's just now getting into the lobby. It looks like 
should be ready to hit this game in just a second. Uh, what do you think needs to change here for the Freaks, aside from their lineup? Well, I wonder if we're going to see the same thing happen like we saw last week. I wonder if the Ash ban is going to come out, uh, which is you know going to be a target ban against Ruler. How do you ban Ash when there's so many strong 80 carries left open? I mean, I feel like if you're going to ban an 80 carry, it has to be something like Lucian, right? Well, Song Yun has shown that he has not yet played Lucian or Ezreal, and okay. he doesn't have a problem, I guess, playing against them. Um, so definitely the Ash thing could have just thrown them off kilter. Uh, and so seeing a ban come out for it, I don't think would be outside of the realm of uh, possibility. Uh, definitely possible, but uh, a lot of bans, uh, not a lot of bans out there, and a lot of very, very strong champions. But it does look like we're going to see game number two here starting up in just a second popping into picks and bands freak the freaks there on the right hand side of your screen samsung galaxy over on the left let's go ahead and start picks and bands here patch 6.10 in case you guys did not know here we go bands coming out first band will actually be against nikki banning out his leblanc which should show up there on your screen in just a second and there it is uh, a lot of big zeros there it hasn't been uh hasn't been statified this season. Now, the LeBlanc ban so early on is a little bit interesting to me. He hasn't shown that he's played it. Now, it is a champion that he definitely can pull out, but I'm curious why they they elect to go for it this game. And then the Caitlyn ban coming out immediately following the Nidalee ban. Well, as far as bans do go, I don't think uh, too many people have prioritized uh, you know, Mickey's LeBlanc until now. Uh, game one, you can see a little bit of hesitation, but no surprise there on the Nidalee ban. Yep, and the Caitlyn ban coming out against Song Yun. Now that is a champion that he did play to high success last week. Right, it's one of those uh, you know top four AD carries right now. You're definitely gonna be seeing a lot there. Rise, he's uh, once again in Rise Prison. I don't think you're gonna get a chance to see him. 100% uh, pick and ban phase. I think 90% of the times that he was banned, nine out of 10, uh, were actually banned, not picks. So definitely gonna take him out of the game. And there's that ban on to uh, Echo. So Crown saying, hey, I'm good at him, but I don't want you to get a chance to play him. Right, and Ixu has shown us that he definitely can play the Echo. So, two top lane bans coming out here, so I'm wondering what top lane is going to be now as a matchup. And rounding it out with the Azir ban in the Victor first pick. Whoa, insta-lock there. QV definitely knows what he wants to give Crown this game. Uh, some good communication and uh, a pretty solid mid laner. Minor changes with the uh, way that his laser works, but I think the big change was to his ult. Right. Now... How is Afrika going to respond? Now, Lyra has shown that he's played Lee Sin and Rek'Sai, so none of the traditional junglers. Oh man, his Lee Sin looked so good. Choice, even, if you guys got a chance to check that out in week one. But uh, Kindred, leaving Kindred up, I mean, you can't really pass over such a strong jungler. Kindred, extremely versatile, fits into a lot of compositions, and not really anything that you can fault someone for picking early on into the draft phase. Absolutely, definitely one of those tip top tier, and uh, it'd be interesting to see, we've seen some cool Kindred compositions. I remember SK Telecom ran like Kindred Zillions, so it's basically it's never dying, uh, and then you pick up some Guardian Angels, and you really never die. Uh, so, possibly gonna see that one, and then Lucian. We're surprised that it wasn't picked up last game. Definitely looks like a possible lock in there. Ixu picking that up for Sang Yoon. Yeah, and I think Sang Yoon electing to pick Lucian. This was going to be his first game on the champion. Now, Lucian is no stranger to bot lane. Um, so it is definitely going to be interesting to see him on this, considering, again, Song Yoon and Snowflower is the powerhouse duo coming out for Afrika. Well, if there's a powerhouse solo, then it's going to be mid lane. Mickey is... Uh, uh, a champion or a player that was very well known for champions like Twisted Fate, like Zed. He got TF and it was just really well controlled in game one. I want to see that Zed out there, but I'm not sure that's necessarily very likely, especially going up against the Victor. I think we might see Fizz. That was a champion that he actually did play, I believe, in game number one uh, versus Long Zhu uh, in their series from week one. So right. uh, a possibility. Also a flex pick with top lane. We've seen that a little bit more prevalent. Correct. Now we don't know if Ixu can actually play Fizz, but Fizz right now would be beautiful against the three champions that Samsung has shown. Oh man, hovering over that uh, the Varus. Now Varus is a champion. Okay, it's probably going to be the Lulu. And yeah, there's the lock-in uh, by Mickey. Uh, saw a little bit of Varus, but not something we'll see this this game. No, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is going to be mid Lulu. By the way, that it is definitely true. is able to be flex into top lane or jungle. We actually have a fanatic spirit it was like going on a rampage with jungle Lulu, but uh, probably not going to see that uh, with the Kinder. Just wishful thinking. 
And Ruler highlighting oh, the Ash again. He's thinking about it. Definitely not a, uh, a bad combo there. Uh, definitely worked out very well in game number one. Oh, Sivir left open. Picker ban last season. Is it going to be prioritized here? Some different AD carry choices in game one, and possibly in Ezreal now. Ezreal, Sivir, what would you go for, LS? I personally think that Ezreal and Sivir are two of the best choices right here, um, both of which are, you know, it's not so bad. Ezreal obviously can give you a little bit more versatility in poke, and they still don't know the final pick that will be coming out of... Uh, oh the my god. Oh no. Swain, is this the pick? Crocs Tigers played it last uh, last week, and uh, i just say Smeb's performance was uh, left a little bit to be desired. Swain, I know you feel very strongly about this champion, LS. That is an understatement. That is an understatement. Uh, I think Rapid. most things uh, that describe Swain so far have been overstatements. He has not had a whole lot of success there, but uh, there's this thing that just got buffed called Grievous Wounds. <laughs> so now uh, definitely a little bit uh, a little bit riskier. A poppy, a little bit less exciting, but certainly more of a solid pick. Yeah, so again, going back to the Ezreal pick, I think that is a lot more of a safe pick, uh, given that there was still a little, you know, Doubt and you know what is uh, that Lulu gonna be? Yeah, so now it's like a top lane pick, uh, but last second change is always a possibility. Three, two, one, and it's locked. locked in. There we go. Poppy picked up. Brixu in the top lane. Yeah, and so that is going to be a mid lane Lulu against the new Victor, and we have Poppy versus Maokai on top lane. So we're going back in time a few months now. Poppy and Fiora both showing their face. Feels like just yesterday we were on patch 6.8. Everybody <laughs> actually understood how to play the game. And then all, until one day the, the, the RNG Drake Nation attacked and all of a sudden it's a, it's a little bit more up in the air. But uh, yeah, like you said, Lulu uh, mid lane uh, champion. We haven't actually seen a whole lot of uh, very, very staple last uh, last year. But this time around, uh, what do you think about this on Mickey? Well, I mean, what I was going, what I was asking myself going into game two was, is Afrika going to go for a team fight, a very heavy team fighting reliant composition? And that is what they have right here with the Kindred, the Lulu, the Braum, the Poppy, and then obviously Lucian just sort of goes with everything. Um, and I, I, the reason that I say that is because last game they showed that they seem to actually be better, better uh, than Samsung at team fighting. Yep, and uh, I mean we'll see if they are better. In fact, coming in, uh, you know, this uh, this game too, uh, you know, Samsung's got some room to work with. They are up one game in the series, and so they will be able to, uh, you know, maybe flex a little bit, uh, see how their picks do go. Uh, really excited to see uh, another champion for Ruler to perform on. His Ash was incredible. Now it's time for Ezreal, and uh, always surprises me when it comes to uh, to Ruler. He's uh, definitely had. Uh, a, I don't know, I was watching him in solo queue, and man, I watched like four or five different games of him, and it was uh, markedly different performances every time. So uh, he is a little bit new coming in here to the lineup, and so I'm interested to see how he does perform. Obviously very, very solid there in game one. Uh, playing Ezreal, it's uh, you know really easy to just you know, sit back and farm. If that's the style you want to go for, what are the styles that we should expect here from both teams? Uh, still waiting on loading into the game, so just a few more minutes until we get in there. Looks like there's a small keyboard problem there for Ixus, so we'll get that started as soon as possible. Generally helps to have a working keyboard. It does. No, no, you can actually play the game with only a mouse. You can. I, uh, when I was first starting out, one of my uh, friends who was actually quite good at the game was like, hey, there's this champion named Teemo. You'd like him. You should play him 1v1. And uh, I didn't know this at the time, so I 1v1 the guy. He saw me into the ground, and then he revealed he was actually playing on a laptop with a touchpad. And, uh, and that just, like, you know, it crushed any mentality. I had that mental boom. That really just... So. Definitely helps to have a keyboard and not just use. <laughs> Sinks deep, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my God! It's, it's the most, truly the most painful death, the darkest timeline. But uh, we're, we're going to forget about that as we. Uh, uh, what was it uh, that I asked you? Oh yeah, what 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 are both of these team comps going for uh, here in game two? Well, I mean the the main thing about Samsung is they continue to have very cookie cookie cutter uh, team compositions. There's nothing too, uh, you know exotic, I guess, about the team comp, except last game they did have the outlet to go into a split pushing mode, but we discussed how generally that was not supposed to be able to happen because of the Twisted Fate pick mm -hmm. that Mickey was on last game, but 
Um, outside of that, it was still relatively cookie cutter with how it was supposed to coordinate and uh, play. So there was nothing unusual about it. This is much more cookie cutter um, in the sense that it's just going to be a straight up team fight versus team fight. Um, the split pushing advantage, however, will be in Africa's angle or in, uh, on Africa's side. Um, and I'm not so sure actually how the current matchup with Lulu versus the new Victor goes. So I'm excited to see how that's actually going to unfold. Yeah, I'm actually exciting to see, excited to see this now full uh, regular lineup for Afrika Freaks, bringing back Lyra, bringing back Iksu. And, and you know, Lyra, I was reading an article on uh, uh, Score Esports by uh, Emily Rand, and she actually mentioned that Lyra is in contention for you know, one of the best junglers in LCK this season, a lot of great potential, one of the up-and-comers on this up-and-coming team, and he's on one of the two carries there along with Sang Yoon, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how well they can be supported. Um, I was actually reading a, uh, another interview with the uh, coach for the Afrika Freaks, who actually used to be a, it was an ex-coach for uh, CJ, came over to the Freaks, and it uh, looks like we are about ready to go here into game number two. Hope you guys are ready. Like they're just unpausing the game, but I guess there's a little bit delay on it. All right, there it was a little delay, but now there's no delay, so let's get in the game. Get into, okay, well, we'll get into game there in just a little bit. So still working on some issues, but uh, that was like the most anticlimactic intro into the game. I thought they were going to unpause it, and then they just pause it, keep it paused, and it's like, uh, any any second now, uh, and then it's still paused. But either way, um, yeah, this is going to be... Uh, so it's about time we had a pause here, LS. You can't get through the first few weeks of LCK. you got to just get that out of the way. Get the pauses right out of the way. <sighs> yeah. So there we go. I know uh, you were doing some, uh, you were actually telling me earlier about uh, some of the uh, the micro decisions that AD carries or just players here in Korea make a little bit. Uh, uh, and it was, I thought it was actually really cool. You drew, me, drew for me this like cool little diagram about how keeping your mouse closer to your champion made a lot more difference and let you control your champion more. That's not something I'll do, which is why I'm going to be like, you know, silver. I actually have not played on the Korean server just yet. Uh, not looking forward to it. <laughs> it's going to expose my my NA skill level. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It's uh, well, what you're talking about is uh, it's definitely interesting. So it's just something we were discussing before the broadcast was uh, Korean players tend to click a lot closer and more rapidly uh, next to their their uh, champions. Thanks for shout out. Yeah. In doing so, uh, their avatars actually respond more quickly and can also enter into uh, certain pixels, enabling and activating certain hitboxes on the map. Uh, which is something that, you know, we don't really see so much. I feel like if you're using that micro for an AD carry, you could have Twitch activate a hitbox. I can't work in any other streaming networks in there, but uh, I think that would be uh, oddly appropriate. But You can see Mickey, he's chilling out there. It's like we have this sick intro, and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to kill you all. And then he's just like, <laughs> you pan over to the real IRL Mickey, and it's just like, you know, chilling out, you know, just uh, having a good time. Looks like uh, we are waiting for a few uh, technical difficulties that may now have turned into actual difficulty, but it does look like they're... Uh, so Africa is actually good to go at this point, but still working out a little bit of a uh, dispute 
It looks like there's a little bit of tension, though, between the teams yeah, with Samsung yeah. calling for a, uh, a penalty. Yeah, they are. Uh, they, they definitely have a lot to work out here. Certainly very significant, uh, you know, the way that you start the game. Uh, both teams definitely do have to be prepared. There are a lot of uh, rules. There's like a checklist rundown. So every every team is responsible for making sure that they are good to go. And uh, hey, if you're not ready, then you definitely, uh, definitely... Uh, well, definitely want to be. So, might be some issues there between Afrika and Samsung. But uh, Afrika says they're ready to go. We just have to work out a few things behind the scenes before we uh, before we go ahead and get into get into this. And it looks like there's going to continue to be a little bit of delay. And it seems like the Samsung players are visibly frustrated right now. Yeah, they are. They definitely have a lot going on for them. Instead, we get to have these slow zooms in onto their face. I'm so glad that we're looking He's at just the thinking, players right now. What am I eating for dinner tonight? I just want to get this over with. And this, is, this is why you like never do anything to ex upset the production guys, because otherwise they'll do that slow zoom on your face. Yeah. My face was not made for slow zooms, LS. So we'll, we'll keep that on the players. It's like you know, you can be really good at League of Legends, but when you get drafted for a team, there's this part in your contract that says you you must succumb to the slow zoom in on your face that's I would definitely take that out of mind but it looks like all of these players are feeling the the full force of as many zooms as possible I'll just zoom out uh, yeah so we're mixing it up here we instead get to see uh, you know them from the opposite zoom angle and uh, yeah, both teams just that's really a little interesting struggles. they seem to be talking I don't know if the the game has not resumed yet. I know in the NALCS, you're actually not allowed to talk during pauses. Well, I guess that's in-game pauses. This might be a little bit different, considering that, I mean, the players haven't even spawned. There's, the only thing that spawned on Summoner's Rift is one spiderling. <laughs> There's one spiderling on the screen. What about the shopkeeper? And that's about, okay, well, does the shopkeeper Does he not matter? Spawn? I, I don't know. I remember think he's when, always there. I remember when they changed the shopkeeper. Now he's like an Ewok dude. He used to have this like mule that sat nearby him, and now he gets like sick items. Like I think Tarek's hammer was there for a while before the rework. I'm not sure if it's still there. I can't uh, believe that you you don't care about him. And what about his companion in the top right? We don't have we don't have a an eight, a shot on him right now, but he's there. Yeah, he matters. I, I like to think that League of Legends is like really an economic game where uh, it's really the two shopkeepers battling each other. We just don't get to hear about that. But here we go. It looks like we are ready to get into game. Finally getting that unpaused. So let's go ahead and start things off. I think it's important to note that what came first, the chicken or the egg. Clearly we saw Lisa's spiderlings came before her. Definitely some good spiderlings. Some good cheers from the crowd. And finally ready to get things underway. The AFs on the top half of the map in the red versus the, the SIGs. Samsung Galaxy, of course, spawning down there in the blue. Both teams going for a safe and sound start to the game, just spreading things out as if Summoner's Rift were a piece of bread and the champions were its butter. We just see a small little skirmish there in top lane. It looks like both teams are just going to fan out very standard openings. I like the spreading analogy a little bit better. It actually oh. just reveals that I'm super hungry. But yeah, first blood being drawn there. The Q lands and already ruler. Infinitely higher damage. Snowflower going to get kind of pinched there. I'm interested to see if he'll actually go for a full recall. Yeah, and uh, Samsung clearly was a little angry about the ward being uh, taken down right there. So. Oh, wow, they actually do wow. let Snowflower. I'm not, maybe they didn't have vision around that corner, but good guys. Samsung will actually let the support go back to base, and Sangyun will be coming out there. Uh, what do you think about these two starts? And maybe just elaborate a little bit more, because the jungle and the double jungle, more importantly, has changed with some of these experience changes on camps. Yeah, we're just going to see basically a standard leash, actually, from top lane uh, on both sides, and just completely standard openings. Although, the bot lane might look to take a camp here. No lane swaps, LS. How can I have strategically in-depth analysis on the starts for League of Legends without lane swaps? Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you, Rapid. Lane swaps, it, it, you don't, you don't, we don't even need you anymore. You're just here for to explain lane swaps. But, <laughs> but now that we do actually have uh, a standard way, I, I feel like this is so much more accessible. It's like, hey, champions are actually fighting each other in lanes. What do you know? And I don't like Mickey's manipulation of the minions early on. I think that he could have coordinated that to be a little bit better. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ruler already getting those concussive blows. Concussively blown. Uh, I don't know how that works out. Because <laughs> no flower and saying you putting on the pressure. And good to see that early aggression working out better for them this time. Yeah, and both junglers just playing a very standard game. Uh, Lulu uh, putting a ward in mid 
mid-brush. So I guess Mickey's thinking that maybe Ambition is going to go for some sort of a cheese, but that really doesn't make sense given how Victor is until around like level 3, level 4. Also, Mickey did know that his jungler was on the top half of the map, so he's right. warding on the side of the map that his jungler's on. Uh, it's traditionally, and correct me if I'm wrong, you usually see them ward the side of the map that the jungler's not on. Right, correct. So that is a little bit peculiar, unless, again, they were anticipating right. a level 2 or a level 3 gank out of the lease, in which case that ward would enable Kindred to get into position for a proper counter gank. And good to point that out. Some of those little things that may not work out, but they're definitely possibilities. Uh, that we could see here now. Lyra hunting a scuttle crab that is not there. A little bit rough there, but uh, Ambition still going through his uh, his jungle path and actually catching up there on uh, jungle CS. Would you promise that you're going to play well with Maokai? <laughs> you can see the win rate there uh, for Q. They actually a little bit under the LCK average so far, so I don't think it's really a big surprise to see Qvay on Maokai. He, uh, uh, he and Ixu both big Maokai players. Yeah, so uh, with the game just basically being standard, nothing too out of the ordinary. However, a ward is going to come in from Nami because they were able to push Lucen and Braum into the tower. So definitely oh, a lot of intel. That's great. Oh, he's actually going to get a lot of damage down there uh, onto Lyra because the Gromp was hitting that whole time. Mickey doing an excellent job, actually, at pressuring and attacking Victor's mana. So Crown not having the best uh, mana, mana control right now. Mana management. Mana management. Yep. And, uh, with and a lot of players, they don't know that. It, sometimes you can actually play lanes where you don't attack the opponent's hit points, you attack his mana. And that is a uh, an alien mm. concept to a lot I, of people. I feel like if I told someone that, they would just like, they just look at me for the longest time. Be like, attack his mana. See, uh, back in the day, back in my day, we used to have Cassidy and Wits End, both of which used to actually on hit remove mana from a champion. So you'd build Wits End on Cassidy, hit the enemy AP carry, and he'd just like lose a ton of mana. So that was, that was back in a, a different time, LS. Well, that's before my time. I joined in season four. Oh boy. You don't have that sick King Rana skin? No. Nope. Oh my gosh. It's worth so much money, I can never sell it. But I can just have it for, for pride and posterity, like both of these teams are playing for. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, continuing, standard uh, standard jungle rotations. Now Ambition and Lyra might collide here. Ambition has the level advantage, though. Man. Can't even talk about how Crown is not super great on Victor, but now top lane. Oh, the Cocoon does reach all the way there. There's the flash. This is not against the wall. Ixu looking to come out of there, but he's got backup there from Lyra, who is in the back. And not a little bit of damage. It's still actually pretty low. Could see this 2v2 get a little bit heated. QB waiting on his twisted advance cooldown. There it is, the flash, the cocoon. They're both landing on Alira. Goes down for his blood for QB. It's going to be a 2 0 with Ambition picking up the other kill. I really don't know what to say right here. The, these type of foresight mistakes in terms of damage and what is capable of champions is really not acceptable at this level of play. And I felt like I, you could tell by how they were posturing, maybe we're going to see in a replay in a second, that they wanted to fight. And that was easily noticeable just by how their champions were moving. Right, it's easy to you know, count in your head. You know, one, two, three on that Twisted Advance cooldown. The QBA was actually in range, but he flashed Twisted Advance because he knew he was going in on that. Right. You just wanted to tie them up and so there's no chance to get away. No chance for escape. I feel like this microphone keeps like escaping from my mouth every once in a while. So in case I just start whispering, I promise I'm only doing that for dramatic effect. Just kidding. Here we go, Ambition. Now back around the mid lane. Not going to land a cocoon there. Nikki decides to uh, be so fine and blow our mind right around that corner as he calls back to base. Now, one thing that is important is they are keeping relatively even in CS and mid lane, Mickey versus Crown, whereas Mickey uh, apparently averages <laughs> minus 12 CS at 10 minutes, so that's a little unfortunate, but seems to be doing even this game. Nice to see that the subtitle there is, since 2016, my Lulu is good now. Because Lulu is actually really good. And uh, uh, in an interview with the uh, now new coach, and I was going to reference this earlier for the Afrika Freaks, they talked about how Mickey really started out as the ace player on the Afrika Freaks. He was their go-to carry. He was a Zed god. He just like killed it on the mid lane in the 1v1. But uh, the coach actually sort of trained him on playing more supportive carries, playing more with that 5v5 team mentality. And uh, Mickey actually said it annoyed him maybe a little bit, but it did really pay off. Uh, Freaks ended last season very, very strongly. Uh, didn't have a strong performance in playoffs. So it's nice to see them coming back and, you know, 
showing that they do have what it takes to you know beat some of the best teams in LCK. So one thing I need to bring up right now is they knew that Elise started blue side, so they could have actually launched a timing attack against Dragon relative to the handoff on Victor, and they're not doing it. And that is an elemental dragon, which is going to greatly benefit them because it directly hurts what Samsung basically wants to do inside of teamfights and when they're posturing outside of teamfights. I know a lot of teams have different uh, opinions on which dragons are strong and weak. Uh, when it comes to Ocean Drake, what's your opinion, LS? Is that like a, a good one? I know it's only out of combat regeneration, but it still seems pretty worth it. That is right that Ocean Drake did get changed. Um, I would still argue, though, that it is it is one of the best dragons. Now, obviously, it rotates between Earth Dragon and Fire Dragon. We don't really talk about Wind Dragon. Oh, Ixu going to get beset, but here comes Lyra. They're, of course, very strong there. It's going to be a nice double knockoff. Mickey on the flank here could get a nice double Glitterland. Only hits Ambition, but Ambition will repel here. Nowhere to go there. Goes down and then goes down. Lyra picks up the kill. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see if Afrika does call for the Herald, and they do. Ooh, so this boy. is the correct macro rotation. However, you don't need... Well, oh, well. you need some champions, and uh, it doesn't look like they're going to go for that. It's because they... I guess they just want to pick up that wave mid. I'm really not too sure what's happening. Uh, the gold value in mid was probably going to be roughly 90 or around... Or 90 to 110 if picked up, so I wouldn't value that too highly. I, I think that there's multiple things that you could have done there. You easily could have denied Victor's recall in mid had you went there immediately and then used that to capitalize on Dragon. Uh, there was Herald timings. Uh, there was one threeing Herald. So you send one person to top lane. Uh, so Afrika, in my opinion, dropping the ball heavily on those rotations right now. Yeah, New Rift Herald is actually pretty good. Uh, maybe not wanting to take all that damage because it does actually deal a lot more damage now. It's just not um, not quite uh, sure about why they'd back off there. But this is this is where we like you know go on Reddit tomorrow and they're like, isn't it obvious they didn't want to take Rift Herald because they're they're pacifists and they don't want to you know, kill the environment? I feel yeah. like that, that would not make you very good at League of Legends. And so now Victor recalling again. He does have teleport though, um, but we are getting to that point in the game where I think Kindred can actually just look for sneaks onto uh, onto Dragon, and that wouldn't be outside of the realm of requests, you know, for uh, a frequent team. So uh, some of, some of the, the proactivity coming out of both teams is definitely questionable right now. I mean, Zhang Yun and Lyra, yeah, they can definitely dash in there, do it quickly, and then dash back out. But uh, see what is prioritized by both of these teams. Lyra just coming back out of base. And we already had that you know craziness up on the top side of the map. But it does look like, uh, especially Africa, like we mentioned, might be prioritizing this dragon a little bit better. And it looks like Mickey gonna take quite a bit of burst. Yeah, he just walked right into that laser. All three procs, uh, okay, only two procs there on that. Oh, the laser poking back in. Great aim there, crown. Really a king on those aims. And now, oh, Dragon dropping down very, very low. Do they commit to this? Dragon down around 900 HP there. The retreat, not in a great spot. The flash backwards, a Kindred ult that saves no flower and Lyra, but for how long? And at what cost, Lyra? Now Mike bring back to this round. Crown in there with a kill. And it doesn't look like Lyra is getting out alive either. Zengu is actually there with a lot of damage. Lyra will drop there, but now it's Cubase's turn. Does he actually get taken out there? Yes, he will. Now Ruler actually in a little bit of a rough spot off around the corner. A nice bubble locks up Ixdu. The Dragon taken in the meantime by Ambition and Samsung come out way on top. Yeah, I don't really know what Afrika's thought process is there. You have to understand, again, at this level of play, you cannot escape from that situation. So with Smite having been up for Kindred, just get the dragon. It's okay if you actually die. There's nothing else that they can capitalize on after it at this point in the game mm -hmm. relative to their items. So it's very bizarre to see them back off. Oh, gank on the mid lane, though. Crown does not have flash. Ixu going the distance for it. Mickey not on the follow there. Ixu. Thinking of that turret, mm, not a lot of benefit. Uh, Victor should have just died there. 100%, he should have died probably about 4 centimeters west to the, the tier 2 mid tower. 4 centimeters per second is the speed at which 80 <laughs> mid laners die. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now mid lane, uh, Crown TPing back to his turret just in time to catch the wave, but. Yeah, this is, this is really weird. I mean, Crown, great on that roam there. Really, really killed it for Samsung. Walks back in the lane, and 
He's super gra glad that Afrika are pacifists, like we mentioned earlier, and didn't actually uh, want to commit there too hard for the kill. No flower. A little bit of a crazy war trip, but he will be out of there too. Uh, just kind of kind of chilling. We're about 12, 13 minutes into the game. Uh, gold count's pretty even, but uh, which team do you really think is ahead right now, LS? Uh, right now, I, I guess the team that is ahead technically is Samsung uh, at this point in time. Ezreal being able to just farm up that that tier right now. He's and he's only he's 20 CS behind on Lucian, and Lucian also does have the call. So that is where all the gold is coming in for a freaker right now. Uh, Maokai with the 2-1-2 up in top lane is going to negate Poppy's CS advantage, and so that's not really problematic. So right now, Samsung is ahead. Really impressive to see Lyra with a 13-minute Sated Devour. I'm, I'm just kidding. It's, it's not Sated Devour anymore. Thank goodness we don't have these like these junglers like, I, I need to keep farming. I'm not, I'm not Sated yet, guys. And your lanes are just like dying all over the place. It's like, dude, you, you got to help him out. But uh, now you actually do get that Blood Razor proc as soon as you buy it. Um, what's going on here? Ambition. Checking out that bottom lane, but uh, Elise is doing a Lee Sin cosplay. Did not see the ward right there. <laughs> like, Wait a second. Where, where's that? Where's that ward? But uh, yeah, not taking that one down. A lot of pressure here around the mid lane by Afrika. Lyra Snowball. <laughs> Just getting lasered. Crown kind of clairvoyant there. He's had a couple of really nice blind lasers that are doing a lot of work. Yeah, so right now they really need to make something happen in bot lane, but it is a little bit difficult to do against Nami anytime that she has her ultimate up. But they have the summoner spell Flash on Lucian, and they have the exhaust onto Braum, so it's very bizarre that the lane that they need stuff to start happening in, nothing is Oh happening. man, Snowflower getting annihilated! Ruler gets the kill credit, but Snowflower, he was uh, not playing Bard, but still on a magical journey there. <laughs> Gets sent back to base the hard way. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Afrika is literally fra falling apart. It all parts. Uh, now Mickey is just going to take a lot of damage, trading ult for ult. Can Crown actually finish this one off? He wants to go through for this one. Lands one part of the laser and flashes. Forces that flash out. Now Wraith and Ambition in the 2v2. Lyra will drop that ultimate just to save his own life. He does have the ability to tumble over this wall, but there's Ruler for the snipe! Huge plays there by this Ezreal and Samsung Galaxy, up 6-2. to two. Now immediately after killing Lucian, what they should do is capture the blue buff and then rotate into mid lane. You can have Elise cut Lulu's ability to get into the mid lane off so that Victor is able to have another wave push into mid, and then you can basically have Elise come through mid lane directly and then look to capture the tower. Yeah, uh, blue buff, uh, you can see, it was captured with a Master Ball. No escape chance there. Couldn't even run away. Uh, tower, going to stay up there. It's, it's going to take a little bit more time to wear that down. Yeah. Of course, you want to use, uh, I guess, grass and water types against towers. It's made of rock. Not Other very impressed again, though, from Samsung. They just had the ability to basically steal the blue, cut Lulu off from mid lane, apply about 500 to 700 tower damage on the tier 1 mid tower, and then rotate Victor and Elise up to Poppy, force Poppy off the tower, which is going to set her behind and enable Maokai to catch up in CS, then maybe even take the top tower and still be able to recall in time to count for Dragon while simultaneously counter jungling Kindred. That's a, that's a lot to do, and it would have required a lot to do all of that. Instead, doing none of it, and just continuing uh, what seems to be a fairly protracted lane phase. Um, doesn't uh, doesn't seem like we're going to have a whole lot of action just yet, although we do have some interesting like champion positioning here. Uh, Africa once again, dedicating a lot of resources there to the mid lane, uh, or Samsung, rather, uh, to the mid lane. Now, maybe rotating down for this dragon timing. I didn't actually catch which dragon it is that is going to spawn there. Uh, see the logo on the wall? Oh, it's covered by that dome. Curses, foiled again. The dome got in the way. Oh, well, they found the pink ward. Hey! <laughs> Finally, I wish there was a ward that you could place down that, like, uh, I don't know, kept you from being able to see things in the air, like a, like a stealth ward. You place it down, and you can, like, hide a champion in there. Wouldn't that be super cool, LS? I, I think that would be imbalanced. I, I'm <laughs> I mean, I think most things that would be imbalanced would be super cool. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get to have my way, which is probably, like, much to the uh, You're support not Trick 2G? Oh, well. <laughs> 
say, uh, somewhat not, although I did see a lot of people wanting uh, you know, him as a caster here. Super big fan, and it is actually an Inferno Drake coming up next. So uh, we have one Water Drake, now looking for a Fire Drake, and if the Freak of Freaks get this, that might be bad, because then they'd be elementally behind. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, it has actually started up there by Samsung Galaxy. No contest here. Freaka just going to give this one over two dragons in a row. Going to Samsung. Yeah, and now as the game continues to evolve, it's going to be interesting to see if Samsung can actually look to capitalize on Herald before it goes oh, away. Mickey in a bad spot there. Chain CC doesn't even ult. Now an exhaust there on to Ruler. Dodgerino away from Snowflower's ult. Snowflower is going to get ditched here, and Ruler just knocks him down. Now it might be Ixu TP's in and in a little bit of a rough spot. Does get one knockback, forced the flash away. Kube is still walking forward. Just advance off cooldown in a couple of seconds, but not going to go back in for it. Uh, and Snowflower got ditched there. It's like, dude, where's my team? That's his uh, terrible 90s movie title. And now we see another situation arise where Samsung is in a position to put a world of her onto Afrika, and it looks like for once they actually are doing it. It is, does look like they are, in fact, taking those opportunities, all those crazy rotations, now they're the ones looking for it. You're around the mid lane, Cuve just zoning off that tower, coming through for an easy turret takedown. First turret of the game, actually, taking down in 18 and a half minutes. Oh, Lyra, uh, yes, got it out here. Tumbles right into Ambition. Forced to immediately ult there. Does have Snowflower in there for the assist. Ambition actually forced to flash away from there. But now actually, no, Mickey walks in. He will actually ult himself this time. But can he stay alive long enough? The answer is no. Lyra needs the piece to scene. He's very low. Snowflower very low there as well. Saying you putting out a lot of damage and taking a lot of damage there from Crown. x up there in the front lines there. Ambition does walk right back over the Hammer Shock. But is still staying alive. x just completely CC'd for ages. Crown there to take him down, and another misstep there. No true shot barrage for any kills, but uh, another misstep there from Afrika. Not quite sure why Ezreal's recalling right now. He probably just missed out on about four or 500 tower damage in addition to the lane gold that he could have known he was guaranteed to get. Yeah, literally what is going to stop him there? Uh, right. All the champions on the top half of the map, but even though Afrika do kind of lose that exchange, uh, Okay, they're not going to get anything done top lane. I thought they might have uh, put some pressure on. Instead, they, much like the Rift Herald, going to go down without uh, a whole lot of fight. Yeah, and the problem is for Afrika is their team composition is very one-dimensional, where there's nothing really fancy that they can look to do. So, as the game keeps progressing longer and longer... Faster and faster. Yeah, Samsung is just going to actually get out of control. Okay, well now Snowflower, there's the real uh, you know, lockdown, but as the fight continues, what goes wrong here? Well, basically, the, the problem that uh, Freak is having is they can't really get their combos off. Lulu's not able to get into position to, to cast ultimates on the targets that she needs to be casting. Man. And Ixu Poppy just keeps overextending and taking very bizarre positioning. It, it, it's very sloppy all around, and it looks like as the game is progressing, and because Samsung keeps getting these advantages, they're finding a lot of confidence for themselves, I'm which they never had in previous games. Yeah, exactly. Uh, super glad that words like bizarre and interesting exist in the English language. I feel like without those, you'd be unable to describe a whole lot of plays in League of Legends, uh, and definitely a few of those there that... Uh, Decision-making process from Afrika it needs to get a little bit on the same page. Kind of interesting that now that they brought their whole you know, main roster together, that the uh, the page that they're on is a little bit questionable. Now Snowflower getting locked up. Turret is still available there. Nice knock up there, but is repelled away from. Snowflower actually will go down there. Ambition, though, taking a lot of damage. Mickey and Sangyun there to take him out. That is the third kill of the game. They're coming in for the Afrika Freaks. Nice knock up there on by Ixu. And Mickey's going to come in for yet another kill. Another uh, knock into the wall there. Crown just is exploded. What's happening to Samsung? Now, will they do Baron? They do have Kindred. Oh my gosh. Baron is started up here. Only Wraith and Cube available to defend, or at least to contest it. Wraith, uh, I mean, there's only so, so much one little Nami can do, man. And Baron dropping here. Uh, I, I, there's, Twisted Fate was in game number one, but looks like the fates are definitely changing here for Afrika. Because they take down the first Baron of the game at 22 minutes. And with Baron, they do propel themselves back into... They propel themselves back into the game. They almost looked all but out. Oh Samsung just God. made a huge mistake, not shredding that tower and focus firing it down, which would have canceled the teleport. So 
Afrika, not out of the woods yet, though. They are still behind despite the Baron buff, and we're going to go into the replay yeah. right here. Yeah, walk us through this tower, and like you said, canceling that TP would have been huge. They just needed to cancel the teleport. The, Nami oh. is never going to die to Lucian here. Elise going in on Braum makes absolutely no sense. Ezreal's able to clean it up, but it doesn't matter. Victor doesn't have Vision of Kindred, so he ends up getting flanked. And this time, Lulu is actually able to unite with her Yordle friend. Crown's positioning here. Like, he just walks right up against the wall. He's like, hey, I'd really like to never move. Right. And that just instantly turns into Baron. So a little over eager by Samsung. And now more turrets, more objectives. Uh, Frika right back in the driver's seat. Ixu has been going through some struggles this game, but he definitely monstered it up there in that last fight. CC crowned down, got that big knock up to allow the rest of his team to come down. And now top lane, oh, Ixu, uh, good, uh, good realization there. Hold that thought for a second. So normally this rotation that uh, Samsung is doing would normally be beneficial for them, but because of the Baron component, they're actually going to fall behind in speed. And so the willingness to take this, the handshake, is just not something that they wanted to do. Now, do you think it would have been worth it to send Ixu in on a suicide mission just to stop recalls and allow them to get that inhibitor? Or better safe than sorry, whoa, Cube, he is by himself in the worst way possible. Nice ultimate there from Braum, snipes him out, Snowflower gets him down there. Cube is out of here. And Afrika is crawling their way back into this Wait, game. Wait, what? No, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 well? Your, your, uh, your dash is not on the R button there, Lyra. Well, for Kindred, it is Memorial Day for the Golems. <laughs> so <laughs> that is what's happening there. Just going to heal them up a little bit longer. Yeah. Golem lives matter. They're actually, actually Krugs now. Golems uh, showing your age there a little bit. Yeah. Double Golems. Uh, Rest in peace. And now Dragon is, is an Ocean Drake is going to go down here. It'll tie it up at 1-1 one -one in Dragons. Poppy taking that one for Afrika. And now what's going to be interesting is now the game is evening up. Again, Afrika still not technically ahead. Even though they have that open exposed inhibitor, they can't really make use of it with their team composition. So there is going to be another decisive fight. And Samsung, however, is not really used to fighting on even footing. So I don't know if they're going to be able to hold their own in the team fight against Afrika in a few moments. Uh, this is very reminiscent of, I think, game two uh, for Afrika versus Longju. Longju actually had a, a pretty big advantage for the majority of that game. But Afrika just, you know, the power of friendship, power of teamwork, whatever you want to call it, they stuck in the game. They were down like 6,000 gold at one point, uh, and they just they just held it. And uh, Longju, the, uh, their real, um, I guess, shortcoming was not being able to push their advantages when they had them. And it certainly looks like Samsung Galaxy uh, hitting, a, hitting a few wrenches thrown into their gears. Yeah. And now all that Samsung wants to do is they just want to match Afrika at every single step of the way. They do not want to take a fight until the next dragon or the next baron. Oh, but there might be a fight brewing here. Lyra will tumble away from there. Snowflower does get locked up there. Pulled back in there by that gravity field. Trying to use the stand behind me to get out. And there is the true shot barrage coming in from Ruler. Now Afrika on the retreat. They are trying to get out of there. Mickey left in Afrika, and he is going to try to escape here. Not going to be able to get out of there. And just as the time might have turned the Tide Caller herself, Nami, uh, helping to turn them right back around in Samsung's favor. Yeah, and now fortunately for Samsung, they are the masters of apparently punishing mistakes. And super cool phones, so multitasking there on the uh, things they are on top of. Now on top of the bottom turret, or on bottom of the... Yeah, well, they're going to take that one down for their sixth turret kill. That will actually represent the last outer turret going down there as Samsung pressure into the base. This is a perfectly done rotation onto bot lane. They should be able to get this tower here. here comes Ixu. Ixu out of the fight there. QB cannot get in here, but Afrika not willing to make this fight happen. Trying to defend this turret, but dropping ever lower. One more minion wave. Uh, be all Samsung need. They really just needed that tower. An open fight right now for, or for Samsung would have really been poor for Afrika. 
Great damage being put out there by Ruler. Is this the fight? Afrika are going to have to take turret. Very low. Minion wave is dissipating. Xu wants to go forward. Does have that shield from the buckler. And Yakube is just going to monster it up. Take that one up there. Ixu very, very tanky, but not tanky enough. He's actually just right outside of the Kindred ultimate. No flower kept alive for just a few more seconds, but he's actually going to go down there. Crown with the kill. Now Lyra in the back line, tumbling around. There does get the uh, Hex Trigger proc, but it's just not enough. A triple kill for Crown. Could seal the deal and end this game. Samsung crushed that fight and it's only saying you left alive. Yeah, and it's important. Like I was mentioning, they wanted to wait until a dragon or a baron. And what I meant by that is a condensed area where a fight is forced and going to happen without either party's control. However, they were able to bring the fight to bot lane because of the misstep that oh, Afrika made. Yeah. Tries to flash away from there, but he's the last member of Afrika to go down. The full ace in the base, Samsung, with an 18 to 6 victory, a 2 0 win over Afrika. Samsung on a, on a four game winning streak, and they, they really brought it back that game. I was actually really worried about that Baron fight that went so badly. Well, Samsung all died, then Freaks get Baron. Right. They're trying to push, but just not enough. Right. Well, I, when I say brought it back, I didn't mean that they they came back. Uh, what I mean is they they basically just they brought it back to their you know their uh, their lead and just you know being proactive and making sure that the game ended. Um, so, anyways, it was really impressive to see them do that. And Song Yoon and Snowflower as KDA bites the dust. Oh man, it looks so good coming into this. One of the strong points, or two strong points for Afrika. A duo had insane KDs. I think that you said they only died twice in two games. Yeah, but uh, died a few more times this series. Yeah, and only going up here for Samsung, proving that not only can they uh, pull out what I would have considered an upset with a win there over Rox Tigers in week one. Now with a win here over Afrika, undefeated through two weeks of LCK. It's an exciting time, and maybe with Afrika, you know, some, uh, some rough weather on their trip through LCK. I don't think they're out of the woods yet, though. It is going to be very interesting when Samsung does collide with either Rox again or they meet SKT, because those are going to be two teams that, yes, they took them down last week, but I'm pretty sure that when it comes to the team fighting and stuff, they're going to have to really up their game. Samsung, they hot like fire. Definitely need to cool after tonight's games. 2-0 uh, here. Uh, we were actually talking a little bit earlier, you know, about our predictions for which team is going to win and how. And uh, you know, we were kind of worried if it was going to be like a, a fast 2-0. And even though it was a 2-0, both teams definitely showing that they illustrated a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I am questioning, though, Afrika. Their, their team coordination on a whole just seems very off, and I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. Well, you expect that with subs, but uh, it is uh, it's a little bit interesting once you get the full roster all the way back in there, and still some communication issues there for Afrika. Right, absolutely. And we definitely saw some mistimings on uh, major neutral objectives like Herald and Dragon from both teams, so not to just put all the fault onto Afrika. But uh, Samsung cookie-cuttering their way uh, with the, the final game of the night. Most people describe that as cookieing because then I would, you know, feel more more delicious. You need to have some more appetizing <laughs> team comp names here. Yeah? Everybody's like, this is a cookie-cutter team comp. Where, where's, where's the cookie that the cookie-cutter is cutting out? I don't know, man. I know. <laughs> okay. That's what we're saving for afterwards. But uh, yeah, great night. I hope you guys have been enjoying the LCK this season. Uh, week two just now starting off. We will be back here uh, once again tomorrow and uh, every day, six days a week. We've got League of Legends coming at you. So uh, if you guys are a big fan of that, then hopefully you're enjoying the new schedule. And uh, yeah, a lot of games here coming up this week. Uh, still have yet to see SK Telecom play. A lot of players, or a lot of uh, fans are waiting for that. And they're going to be playing playing KT Rolster on the fourth, so another big telecom war in a brand new season with a lot going on, some big storylines even continuing on through this week. Yep, and uh, I'm just excited to see how the rest of the week goes. Again, we are very early on in the split, mm -hmm. so we can definitely see subs being used and whatnot, and we can definitely also see some experimentation with playstyles and stuff. Right, we've already seen quite a few subs. Uh, I think it was Rocks Tigers in game two, they subbed in their mid laner Cry. But uh, we'll have to wait a little bit longer before we have that coming out. Time for our Sona Kong IP MVP. It's Wraith with a 0 0 14 Nami performance. Yeah, his Nami was actually really impressive. Some of the bubbles that he did end up hitting, reminiscent of Pumandu back in his heyday. 
Uh, the only Ash, the, I, I only think I saw one mechanical mistake in a team fight, which was a little late of an ultimate in bot lane. But other than that, a phenomenal performance, and I think entirely deserving of the MVP. Yeah, Wraith actually replacing Kuma and do there for a while. Coming back here on to Samsung, uh, very very deserving. Almost 80% kill participation there. 77.8, so he's going to earn himself 100 MVP points, and uh, of course, very, very well deserved there. A, a great Nami performance, and actually in his game one, uh, where maybe we thought uh, Snowflower was going to counter him with that Blitzcrank, played very safe, did not get grabbed. I think, yeah, I don't think he got grabbed there in that uh, the game. So, well, he did very early, but won his team the trade. So, a uh, great performance there, and certainly very, very excited uh, to begin yet another week. LCK here at uh, the Nexon Arena. If you guys are in Seoul, South Korea, come down and check us out. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you once again. Looks like we'll be cutting to an MVP interview. Thanks for watching. See you soon. The first round of the game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. Today's game was released by the first round of the game. 정말 땀으로 온통 젖을 정도로 정말 열정적인 플레이를 보여주신 것 같은데요. 경기장 아니 많이 더우셨나요? 네, 에어컨을 끄고 해서 좀 더워요. 에어컨을 껐던 게 에어컨을 켜서 좀 추우면 손이 얼어서 경기가 잘안 풀리나 봐요. 네, 이제 So he's saying that they had to turn off the AC or they had to turn on the AC because it is extremely hot in the booth. So that's what you were seeing the players fan themselves with. 그러진 않았어요, 다행히. 네 오늘 삼성의 입단에서 정말 몇 경기 안 보여줬는데도 정말 롤러 선수의 존재감 확실합니다. 그만큼 레이즈 선수의 호흡이 잘 맞았다는 얘기겠죠? 네. 레이즈 선수의 호흡은 어떤가요? 지금 좀 마, 많이 좋은 것 같아요. <웃음> 누가도 이길 수도 있을 것 같긴 해요. 네, 레이즈 선수가 사랑에 빠지거나 그런 건 아니죠? <웃음> 그런 건 아니에요. 네 오늘 1, 2세트 나란히 롤러 선수가 레이즈 선수 MVP를 차지하셨습니다. 네. 1세트 애쉬로도 롤러 선수가 MVP를 차지했는데 네. 초반에 미드로 궁극기 마법 수정 화살을 계속해서 던져주는 모습이었어요. 좀 스페에 힘을 실어주려는 노력이 돋보였는데 네. 그게 본인의 라인전에 좀 확신이 있었기 때문에 본인이 내린 판단이었나요? 네, 그냥 공풀이 되면 은 미드도 어차피 스페라 맞추면 은 죽어서 그냥 계속 쐈어요. 아 그게 뭐 팀의 전략은 아니었고 본인이 네, 그냥 제가 저 혼자 썼어요. 적중률은 조금 낮았지만 분량은 네. 1등이었습니다. 알고 네. 계셨나요? 네, 봤어요. <웃음> 롤러 선수 애쉬 자신 있으신가 봐요. 네, 전부 다 자신 있어요. <웃음> Yeah, he's saying how he didn't get to play a lot of games with Samsung when he went to Samsung, but the uh, the duo dynamic that he has with uh, Wraith ends up being really well, so he feels extremely comfortable on the team right now. Right now, he's saying that they're extremely confident against any team that they're going to face. And they have the World Cup in their vision. Thank you. Today, the result of the game is that Samsung Galaxy won the second round. After that, KT Royce and Junior Phoenix won the second round. Yes, it's good. As long as you're down there at 0-2, top of the standings, Samsung Galaxy. So, plus four for them. And, of course, they are right on top of ever. We will be seeing a little bit later on this week. We'll be seeing every team get on this week. But super exciting. Of course, ever versus the Gen Air Green Wings, like I was talking about. It's going to be exciting to see. And I hope you guys are uh, ready for that one. Uh, of course, if you guys are in Korea and you do want to come down here to the Nexon Arena in Gangnam, Seoul, South Korea, ticketlink.co.kr is where you guys can pick up tickets for that. I hope you guys, uh, hope to see you guys back here once again. Uh, Ever versus Jinair. That's what's coming up uh, next. What do you think about that series, LS? Well, I am curious. Well, I think Ever is going to perform for Amelie. Definitely not an underdog by any means. Uh, and I think that Ever's team fighting, and I'm also, uh, well, Ever's team fighting in general, I think is going to be phenomenal. And uh, I'm excited to see Loken again. Yeah, exactly. Loken, a treat to watch, and really ever sort of the, uh, the you know the new guy along with the MVP in LCK. So gonna have to wait until tomorrow to see how that works out. But uh, looks like uh, we're closing things down here. Uh, big shout out to our Korean commentators. If you haven't checked out that stream, we've got Captain Jack and Helios joining that. But let's go ahead and.
and head on out. We will see you guys back here again tomorrow. We love you. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Turn back time